It's now time for the Weekly with News 6 Morning Anchor, Justin Warmuth. This is the Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmuth. Good morning, I'm Justin Warmuth and welcome to the Weekly. This morning we're joined by Orange County Mayor Jerry Demings. Thank you so much, Mayor, for joining us six feet apart uh, as we practice social distancing in a time like this. I, I, first off, how are you doing? How's your family doing? I'm doing very well. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Uh, my wife is in town, you know, out from Washington, D.C., and so far our entire family, we're healthy. Good, good. Uh, Orange County, how would you grade uh, the residents in, uh, of Orange County and how they've been practicing social distancing and, and staying home as we try to stop the spread of the coronavirus? I'm going to give our community an A minus. Okay. Uh, because uh, by and large, 95%, I'm going to say, of our residents are following uh, the orders that have been put in place. They are complying with the social distancing. They're voluntarily uh, wearing the face mask or mm -hmm. uh, the coverings. And so I have to applaud them for that effort. Uh, there's a few who just still quite don't get it, but mm -hmm. we hope to bring them along as well. Uh, when you came in this morning, you were donning your mask. Is that something you do when you're out and about? Are you wearing your mask uh, every day? And, and should folks, if they have that chance, wear their mask if they go to the grocery store or maybe go get gas or something like that, would you recommend them wearing those masks at all times? When I'm out in the public, I'm wearing my mask. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, in the county administration building, uh, when I'm not alone and we're uh, in uh, a meeting and we may be six feet, feet apart, I still wear a mask at that point. So uh, with leading the effort during a state of emergency as the Orange County Mayor, I become the emergency manager for the entire county. And so I have a leadership responsibility there. And so I don't want to inadvertently take myself down and I cannot lead when I'm mm -hmm. supposed to be leading and the people need me the most. Mm -hmm. uh, a pandemic is not something that's necessarily, and, and especially something that we are dealing with that kind of evolves. And, and as we learn more about, I mean, it's called novel coronavirus for a reason, uh, as there's no playbook. And so how challenging has this been to kind of navigate the best practice and how you lead uh, the residents of Orange County through this? I have to listen like all other mayors and leaders across the nation to the health care experts. Uh, once I have the body of science and the knowledge and the information by which to make decisions, I'm very adept and used to uh, crisis management, you know, after nearly four decades now being a crisis manager, mm -hmm. uh, much of what I do comes naturally. Uh, so we have a great team of people at Orange County government who helps to make certain that we respond in a timely manner to the needs of our community. There's still a lot of uncertainty about this uh, particular virus that we don't know, but again, I lean on the healthcare professionals to tell me more and more. And as each day goes by, we learn more and more about this virus. No doubt, and as each day goes by, more and more people are getting tested as well. In fact, mobile testing sites now uh, are starting to open up around Central Florida. We have a number, almost a dozen uh, places where folks can get tested in the, in the Orange County area. Uh, that is key uh, in figuring out how widespread this is, when we can open up the economy, how many people are infected, how many people are asymptomatic. There's, there's just so much uh, that, that testing will provide as we move forward. Uh, if there's been uh, any uh, shortfall with mm -hmm. the response to this pandemic, it centers around uh, the inability to test many people. Mm -hmm. uh, because we have relied on the strategic national stockpile we relied on the state, uh, the public sector to uh, really acquire the testing kits, the collection kits. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have nearly enough of those. However, I do have to say the private sector hospitals have really stepped up to the plate. Mm -hmm. They've been able to somehow uh, get supplies of testing kits and here within Orange County and Central Florida, the majority of the testing that has been done has not been done by those or through those public testing sites, but done through the hospitals themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we're about a month or so of, of staying home, the stay at home order that the governor, you were before the governor, but the governor did the statewide stay at home order, safer at home order, I think is what he called it. Uh, do you see this going another month? Um, I can't say precisely mm -hmm. how much longer it's going to go. There's I know that's like the million dollar question, <laughs> isn't it? There's uh, good news, however, because when we look at the various predictive models mm -hmm. uh, that um, 
the researchers, uh, the epidemiologists have uh, looked at across the, the country and really uh, within Florida and here within Orange County, those predictive models suggest that we could be uh, within the period of the peak right now mm -hmm. to some of the models uh, lag a bit and don't show us peaking until the first week of May. In either case, what we are seeing here in our community, while each day we have new cases, mm -hmm. uh, what we're seeing is fewer individuals requiring hospitalization. And so that suggests that for at least the last week, a little better than a week, uh, a certain flattening of the curve. If we can uh, hold the, that flattening throughout this week, I believe that bodes for good news for us that uh, we have uh, put measures in place, these uh, stay-at-home orders and other social distancing mm -hmm. uh, directives, they are working. And so uh, that's the good news that we have. Uh, however, even though fewer hospitalizations are occurring, the individuals who are being hospitalized, they are uh, critically ill. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, the bad thing for those families. We uh, now have about 1,038 uh, different uh, individuals who have tested positive in Orange County. Mm -hmm. That's the most in, within Central Florida. And uh, the Department of Health reports that we have 18 individuals who have died. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you that one of those individuals I knew very personally, and it makes the numbers real for me. It does. Uh, some of my colleagues have tested positive mm -hmm. as well. And so uh, it is a very serious virus that can be a deadly virus mm -hmm. if we don't manage the health care crisis appropriately. Have you been tested? Uh, I have been tested. And how did that go? A negative. Negative. Uh, you would let us know, obviously, but uh, the, the process, it, it's, a, it's an invasive thing, but we're learning uh, different processes works uh, as well. Saliva doesn't have to be that invasive no nasal swab that everyone uh, seems to see. I had invasive nasal Oof. swab. That was rough, it was, huh? it was It was rough. It yeah. Was... Um, I, you know, when we look at the numbers around the country and uh, you know, in New York City, obviously, is, has been the, um, the epicenter. Uh, they've tested a lot of people. A lot of people come back positive. Uh, in Florida, the, the main uh, problem areas were down south, and they continue to be down south. We are starting to see that curve flatten a little bit. Are you surprised that with Orange County being such a, a tourist destination, marquee place for people to travel, Disney World, and the likes of Disney World uh, throughout Central Florida. Are you surprised that Orange County has stayed uh, towards the bottom of the top five, if you will? I'm not surprised, but let me tell you why. Uh, I believe that early on, when the nation's uh, largest theme parks mm -hmm. made a decision to close down, that was a pivotal moment for our community, perhaps a pivotal moment for America because we are the number one tourist destination in the United States with 75 plus million visitors who were coming here prior to this pandemic. Uh, I believe that when the theme parks shut down, that stopped the potential spread uh, throughout the nation and certainly here within this area. So I have to applaud uh, those theme parks because truly the corporate decisions that they made, they put uh, the people over profits. Mayor, we do have to take a short break, uh, but when we come back, we'll talk more uh, with Orange County Mayor Jerry Demings and we'll focus a little bit more on the economy. Stay with us. This is The Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmuth. Welcome back to The Weekly. I'm Justin Warmuth. This morning we're joined by Orange County Mayor Jerry Demings as we continue to talk about the coronavirus. We talked about testing sites and, and things like that and, and the health aspect of this of this crisis the economy is certainly another thing that a lot of people are dealing with and a lot of people are watching when we talk about reopening the economy this is not going to be just open the gates and let everyone come in right explain how this process is going to work when we eventually get there uh, there will have to be a measured approach to reopening much like uh, the post 9-11 days uh, the airport and seaport security changed in the world forever. After this pandemic passes by, we're going to see uh, a change in the sanitary protocols mm -hmm. across the globe forever. Mm -hmm. So as we reopen, we have to endeavor to work with the federal, state, and local governments who have the regulatory authority 
over workplaces, et cetera, uh, to give guidance to what that reopening looks like. More than likely, uh, there are going to be certain businesses that are going to uh, require certain screenings to occur of their, their patrons before they enter. Uh, there will be uh, guidance about uh, occupancy levels and creating and mandating certain social distancing. There will be other sanitary protocols, for example, there may be mandates for certain classes of employees that they have to wear masks, gloves, uh, and other uh, pieces of sanitary equipment, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps and a greater uh, percentage of employees than they've ever seen before. Uh, so all of that has to happen, and so I believe that uh, there has to be a measured approach. We will work with uh, the business community mm -hmm. with guidance from healthcare experts about what it takes to really stop a potential virus from spreading or mm -hmm. some other type of disease that may be airborne, uh, transmitted through uh, touch, mm -hmm. et cetera. So uh, as we uh, endeavor to learn more about this virus, you're gonna see, I believe, uh, some sensible mandates that will be put in place. Mm -hmm. We will begin that process, uh, really the early part uh, of the coming week, mm -hmm. uh, where we will have a, a task force, a mm -hmm. recovery task force sure. that will work to ensure that we have the type of responses that's unique to Orange County, to the region itself. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to ask you, because we've seen uh, a number of states try to band together. Uh, when it comes to Florida specifically, is it going to be a statewide thing, or do you think the governor will say, hey, local counties, work within your region and go from there? The way we live our lives, we live in local communities. Yeah. So regardless of whatever federal mandates or state mandates uh, occur, they get implemented at mm -hmm. the local level. Mm -hmm. So the local businesses and community have to be involved in the decision-making process because you have to allow for the uniqueness of the types of industries that we have within our respective areas mm -hmm. and get some input about what is really practical. So we want to ensure that we do that. Uh, we've had uh, recently a conversation across the region between Orange, Osceola, Seminole, and Lake Counties mm -hmm. to talk about what that looks like for our entire region. Mm. What do you think the job market will look like um, over the summer? I think there are going to be entrepreneurial opportunities. Mm -hmm. There are some individuals who have already adjusted their business models. Yeah. Uh, so I believe that from a business perspective, there are new opportunities there. Mm -hmm. So if you were one of the individuals who lost your job, think about becoming an entrepreneur. Uh, think about what we're doing. We know that in terms of the supply chain mm -hmm. for the different types of sanitary uh, devices or, or supplies that will be needed, that won't change forever. So if I were looking to get into a certain business, I might would want to get mm -hmm. into those types of businesses. Businesses such as restaurants have had to make an adjustment. They now understand that they can do much of delivery service, mm -hmm. uh, much more takeout business. Mm -hmm. And so I think there are opportunities there for our workforce. And then there will be this pent up demand where because of the social distancing, uh, people have been kind of emotionally, I think, depressed. Mm -hmm. uh, and there will be this desire to get out and enjoy just living. Right. We have the world's biggest playground. <laughs> And I think people are going to be a little timid at first, but they're going to want to get out and at least do something. And, and that's to your point. You know, I, I do want to ask you, and, and maybe you can just explain the process. A lot of people have been seeing the headlines maybe talking about WWE as an essential business, right? This, um, they, they see it's in Orange County, um, and they think it comes from you. Can you explain where, uh, what went on here and, and where it came from? Okay, it came from the governor's yeah. office. Uh, the governor did not consult with me here in Orange County about uh, how he would go about deeming businesses here in Florida essential or non-essential. Mm -hmm. uh, initially, uh, once the governor put his order out, the WWE was not deemed an essential business. It was non-essential. Uh, I assumed that there was a representative from within the WWE that had a conversation with the governor and uh, a day or so after the governor put out his directive, uh, he expanded that directive and included the WWE. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I did not play a role in that specifically, and uh, uh, they were able to convince the governor that somehow they are akin to being a media company, and therefore they should have been uh, deemed essential. Mm -hmm. uh, in either case, um, I don't know that I buy that. Right. I think that that may have been a, a stretch of the intent of what we typically look at. We typically look at businesses that support uh, life, health, or safety uh, for a community as those essential businesses. And mm -hmm. so if you are one of the supporters of any of those life, health, or safety uh, components that we have as a community, as a nation, uh, the truckers, et cetera, mm -hmm. then you can understand why they would be deemed an essential business. Mm -hmm. When you look at uh, the WWE, I'm not sure that they fit within that. And I realize that the governor has been criticized for that, uh, but that was not a decision that was made here at the local level. I, Disney World had uh, a number of people furloughed. Thousands of people have been furloughed. It seems like uh, the governor is taking priority in, in figuring out when and if they do become unemployed, laid off, and they try to get into the system, that he is trying to streamline that process. Do you think that is a good idea when you have this massive influx joining the already massive influx of people trying to get uh, benefits? Well, let me say this. I think sometimes no good deed goes unpunished. I believe that um, the goal that Disney had in mind was to lessen the burden on the state of Florida to process an additional 43,000 of their employees on top of everybody else. Mm -hmm. I, I think that uh, they had righteous um, um, intendants of you know with what they were trying to do there, but. Uh, unfortunately, they get criticized as well because the public perception is that, you know, their employees are somehow uh, being taken care of first before others. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's uh, good it's and balance, bad in yeah. it. There has to be a balance there. But uh, certainly, if the 43,000 uh, employees from Disney was in the mix with everybody else, it just complicates it all yeah. for everybody. So as I think a responsible corporate uh, employer, Disney was trying to take care of its employees and not bring the system that is already terribly overburdened uh, to, uh, to a, a halt. Uh, we only have time for one more question, but I do wanna ask you, it, it, folks are going through a tough time right now, whether it's on the health side of things or maybe financially. If you had a message for the folks of Orange County, maybe in Central Florida who are watching right now, what would you say? What I would say to the residents of Orange County is that um, we're going to get through this. We are getting through it. And I believe that early summer we will see some relaxing of the restrictions that's put in place uh, if we continue to be effective at what we're doing now. So with the assistance of all of our community, we can have the kind of success where we can open sooner than later. I hope so. All right, Mayor, thank you so much for your time. I know you're a busy guy. And thank you so much for watching this morning. Uh, for more information on the topics that we discussed, head to clickorlando.com weekly. Take care.